Hey, contingency contract has been announced for JP and it will be coming to EN soon. I'm excited. This video is a general overview of what contingency contract is and whether or not you should prepare for it as a free to play player. If you want an in-depth guide on how to clear CC at a high risk as a free to play player, I have written a guide that currently has over 300 shares on Facebook. Wait till the end of this video. Now let's get into what contingency contract is and why Tectone is wrong. For those who missed it, this is the announcement from Ark Knights JP. We should be seeing this in English in a few days, maybe even today as the video is being uploaded. The main post itself basically tells you what contingency contract is, but the description here written by the Ark Knight staff says that it will be released in the middle of June. As I'm recording this video, it is the 21st of May. Middle of June, I'm assuming is gonna be 21st of June. We have one month to prepare. First of all, what is contingency contract? Contingency contract is the hardest event in Ark Knights to clear 100%. It is end game content. If you just started the game recently, you will not be able to clear contingency contract 100%. Spoiler alert for the maps, I will be showing the maps right now. In contingency contract one, we will be dealing with three maps. This is not to be confused with contingency contract zero, which comes after contingency contract one. This is contingency contract one. The main map that will be open every single day is Area 59. We also have two rotational maps. This is the drone map, also known as the Abandoned Tower. And this is the other map known as Abandoned Square. The maps themselves don't look too hard and they don't have anything too hard in them either. If you can clear Annihilation 2 on auto without anyone dying to the red katana, you can clear Area 59 on zero risk. If you cannot clear Annihilation 2 without having anyone die to the red katana, that does not mean you will not be able to clear Area 59 at zero risk. What that means is that you will have to use a different strategy. However, if you cannot clear Annihilation 2 safely on auto, I don't think you're leveled enough to do contingency contract at a high risk. What are these risks that I keep on talking about? Well, here they are. In contingency contract, you will be able to select a combination of any of these risks. For example, if I choose this first risk here, it will limit my lives to one, meaning if I have a single leak, I fail the mission. The contingency level also raises to one. If I combine this with, say, this risk here, this will slow my DP regeneration down by 75%, but it also gives me three risks. So now my entire risk level is risk four. This is what people mean by risk 18 clears or risk 20 clears or risk 16 clears. It's the number of risks you get by putting different tags together. Not all 18 risk clears are exactly the same. For example, this random set of tags here gives me 18 risks. However, if I were to swap this one out for this one, I would also have 18 risks. This means that if there is a certain thing in the map that is causing you a problem, you can try to avoid that particular risk and go for a different risk instead. However, at a high risk, you are going to have to select risks that you don't want to take. For example, this is a risk six clear where you have to deal with maxed out gas mass and maxed out red katana. I don't think that many people would be able to clear risk six if these are the tags that you choose. There are also five support risks that you can choose to help you clear the stage easier. However, choosing any of these five support risks will turn your total risk to zero, meaning it is worthless to do. So what's the point of doing things at a high risk and should you even try it? Well, completing contingency contract at 18 risk means you can get everything. You may have heard other YouTubers say that you do not need to complete contingency contract at 18 risk because you can clear it at 16 risk and you will get most of the rewards. However, as a free to play player, I do believe that getting all of the rewards is better than getting most of the rewards. So yes, you should attempt to clear 18 risk. When you clear 18 risk, there's a milestone reward such as clear this map with 18 risk and you will get, I don't know, 300 tokens or something. You will not get that for clear this map with 19 risk. That just doesn't exist. So anything above 18 is just to challenge yourself. The rewards that you can get are listed here. There's a siege skin, which should have captured many people's attention. But what really matters to me is the amount of RMA that you can get. I hate farming for RMA. Thank God we get this much RMA. I will link this page from Game Press listing out all the rewards so you can check it out yourself. Oh yeah, one more thing. Contingency contract does not cost sanity. Everything that you see right here is entirely free, meaning there is no drawback in trying to complete contingency contract on risk 18. Okay, so now we know what contingency contract is and how it works. Let me directly address Tectone. First of all, don't go out and attack Tectone because he's done nothing wrong. He just shared his opinion. He's completely entitled to his opinion. I love Tectone and I would love to do a collab with him, but I do not agree with his advice for free to play players or low budget players to complete contingency contract. My goal, my dream goal would be able to clear 25. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that. 
I know that's what the CN players uh, did, but they were playing, they had about two more months to grind. Uh, no, the CN players were not able to complete 25 risks because they had two more months to prepare. There are currently only two videos on CN that have a 25 risk clear. One of them were created by a group of cheaters that have been banned. You may have seen this on YouTube, it's called the Reign of the Emperor of Science. Here's why Tectone won't be able to complete 25 risk. I'm currently searching on Bili Bili. The search term I've entered is Mingru Fangzhou, meaning Arknights, Wei Ji He Yue, meaning Contingency Contract, R Shi Wu Zi, meaning Level 25, Tie Cheng, meaning Chernobog, and we're specifying Chernobog because the map is in Chernobog. I'll show you what happens if I don't enter that search term in a second. And finally, Wu Shi Jiu Chu Fei Shu, which means Area 59. That is the map name. If I do not enter Chernobog into the search term, this is what we get. We get a lot more videos. However, the only 25 risk here is this one over here. This one is a risk 18 clear. This one is a risk 12 clear. That's a risk 8 clear. That's a risk 12. That's a risk. Can't even see that. It's too small. It's a single digit. That's a single digit. That's a single digit. You don't have 25 risk clear. You have to enter the search term Chernobog in order for, for you to see 25 risk clears. Okay, there are two 25 risk clears here. The first one is by Ryan Lab Experimental Group. These guys are the cheaters that have been banned. I'm gonna pop up their video. And then the second one here is not by, done by Ryan Lab Experimental Group. I don't know who these guys are, but allow me to show you why Tectone won't be able to recreate this. This here is the team that Ryan Lab Experimental Group used to clear 25 risk. Note that everyone is max potential, max leveled, and all M3. If you wanna know how these guys cheated, from what I've heard, someone needs to fact check this, but from what I've heard, these guys created their own server to spoof the Yostar servers so they could connect to the Yostar servers and give themselves infinite random, infinite mats, infinite sanity, etc., etc. That's how these guys were managed to get maxed out everything. Spectre here is a core part of the strategy. If we go to Tectone's video and we look at his entire set of characters, you will either I'm blind or you will not be able to find a Spectre anywhere here. I know that he has every single character but he goes all the way down to his three stars, which means that the Spectre is behind his three stars. Yes, Tectone is a whale. Tectone can level up his Spectre all the way to max and M3 it all the way to max within a few days. However, what he cannot do is get potential four on his Spectre. Why does potential four matter? Because if we look at Spectre's profile, her potential four gives her a talent's enhancement. What is the talent enhancement? She goes from having 10% extra max HP to having 12% extra max HP. Let's take a look at what that actually means. If we go to Elite 2 Max and we factor in Trust, which does not give her extra HP, she has a total of 2,630 HP. Once we factor in her talent, she has 2,893 HP. Having potential 4 makes that 10% into 12%. So if we use 12% subtracted by 10%, this is the difference we get a difference of 52.6 HP or 53 HP. Remember that. Now let's take a look at the 25 risk clear done by the Rhine Lab Experimental Group. Spectre's skill is not ready yet and she's about to be hit by the police guy, not the gas mask guy. She will be left with 12 HP. Keep in mind that her max HP is 737 because the risk that these guys took decrease the maximum amount of health that all operators have. If the potential four gives Spectre 53 HP by default, she will not be able to live here without the potential. And if Spectre dies, these guys will just leak through. Swartz will not be able to kill two of these guys before they walk out of her range. But what about the other strategy? Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say that this was a 25 risk clear showing up here? Let me take that back. There aren't two 25 risk clears. There is only one single 25 risk clear ever. And that was done by a group of cheaters. This other one, which I thought was a 25 risk clear, was only an eight risk clear. That just makes it worse. So no, it ain't happening. You're not gonna clear 25 risks. It's just, it's just not gonna happen. Oh yeah, he also said this. Listen to this. I think I can clear a risk 18 before the event's over using only E1s and my friend rep of an E2. Of course you can. Of course, it has been done. You can clear a contingency contract at 18 risk using E1s. However, that doesn't mean anything. Remember this, in contingency contract, especially at a high risk, it does not matter what level your guys are on. It does not matter how many guys you have at a high level. What matters the most is who you have. By saying that I'm gonna clear 18 risk using E1s only and a friend support E2. Yes, of course you can do that. But don't give false hope to people that they can clear contingency contract without any E2s. If you only have E1s right now, but you do not have the right E1s, you do not have the right people, 
you will not be able to clear contingency contract risk 18. Here's exactly what I mean. If this was your team, all these here are E1s. You have an E1 B Hunter, E1 Mostima, E1 Exusii, E1 Silverash, E1 Mira, E1 Amia, E1 Courier, E1 Spectre, E1 Mayor, and E1 Estelle. This is a horrible team composition. No one should ever do this. This is a completely unrealistic, but it demonstrates exactly what I mean. If you don't mention specifically who you're E1ing, there is no way that you could E1 some random units to fill up some random roles, such as, oh, I need a guard. Oh, I need an AOE guard. Let me get a summoner. Let me, let me get another AOE guard. Oh, Spectre can become invincible. Let me, let me use Spectre at E1. Oh, that should be good enough. Oh, I need a caster. Oh, let me get two casters. Let me get an AOE caster as well. Oh, I need a Vanguard to generate DP. Here's the thing. If, if you, okay, if Tectone can replicate this exact set of characters right here, as he says, using a team of E1s without specifying which E1s or who he's going to use, just E1s, if you can use this team to clear 18 risk, I'm gonna start making our nice videos. Because let me show you a detailed analysis of why this won't work. You have casters, you have guards, but you don't have a specialist. So here's three free risks. You can take the one base only risk. You can take all of these risks from the very beginning because all of these are just basically one risk. I'll translate this into English for you so you can read it yourself. You can even decrease the attack power of all our units. However, because all of these units are E1, you're never going to have enough damage to kill anyone. So that's unrealistic, right? What about having 75% lower health on all of our guys? That could work if you don't get hit a lot. So let's take that. 75% reduction of DP generation. Courier, a single Vanguard, will not keep up with that. So that is unrealistic. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and give you the 25% reduction tag. We're not doing any support tags. If you increase the attack power of all enemies by 80% and your units have 75% lower health and your guys are E1 so you're not doing enough damage to kill them, that's completely unrealistic and this tag will not happen. You cannot take the 75% lower health tag and the 80% increased enemy damage tag if you are E1 only. There's no unit that can take that much damage and you're not dealing enough damage to kill them. If you do the gas mask or katana max buff tag, that will not work either because you will not have a response to max gas mask, even with Mayor. Mayor's bots are gonna get one shot by the uh, by the gas mask. You will not have a response for Red Katana either. Even if you lock them with Mostima, an E1 Mostima will not do enough damage to kill a gas mask and a Red Katana. It just won't work. So these two tags are unrealistic. You can increase the health of the enemies by 150%, but you don't deal enough damage to kill them. I can give you the benefit of the doubt here and give you the increase enemy health by 25%. Tag. I've only selected 10 operators here, so I can safely give you the tag to reduce operator count to, to 10 only. Now, how are you going to deploy all of them? Because we can select these ones here to get rid of some tiles on the map so you can't deploy on some tile. Well, out of all the units here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six units here. So 60% of your roster at E1 is a range unit, and there's only one range tile. So 60% of your roster is now useless if you choose this tag. So you can't choose this tag. Let's let, let, let's give you the benefit of the doubt and let's do the most minimal tag. There are one, two, three, four, five, six slots on the map left for your deployed six range units. That's exactly perfect for you. So with all that said, you can get 14 risk. You are still four tags away from getting 18 risk. Let's give you the benefit of the doubt and let's increase the enemy's attack by 15%. Let's also decrease our own attack by 10%. That's still only 16. Remember, you don't deal enough damage to kill them already. So by further reducing your own attack, you're gonna deal even less damage and your health is already lowered. So having them do stronger attacks means that you will likely die faster before you can kill them. For the final benefit of the doubt here, I'll give you the first gas mask tag and the first katana tag. That's going to get you to risk 18. But I do not believe that this will be possible. You do not have a response for the gas mask. You do not have a response for the red katana. The only things here that you have relatively covered is using Bee Hunter, Silver Ash, Spectre, Mayor, or Estelle in order to take out the casters on the bottom right, or the one caster that comes out at the very end on the top left. Those are the only two things that you can realistically cover. And that's two out of the four main threats. I am not saying it is impossible to clear 18 risk at E1. What I am saying is there are specific strategies using specific units to clear a contingency contract on risk 18 at E1. The E1 part does not matter. There is a strategy that involves a E0 level one Myrtle that I will showcase in my strategy guide video. However, just telling people that you're gonna clear risk 18 using E1s does not mean anything. Anyone can do that given the right units. 
especially Tectone, who is a whale who can afford to raise any units he wants. Unless you have all of the correct units already leveled, the E1 strategies may not work for you. That's why you should take a look at all the strategies first. Now, let me not misquote and take out of context what Tectone says here. He did not say, do not E2 any of your units, E1 all of your units. That is not what he said. He says, what I say is, if you are a free to play or budget player, you should focus on diversifying your roster before worrying about E2 in your units. Okay? First of all, I feel bad for Tectone here. He shouldn't have been taken out of context, and I feel for you, brother. But this advice is just not right. It is right for a certain group of people, but it is not right for the target audience that you said you were targeting, which are free to play players or low budget players. This advice is not correct. Here's why. Tectone says that you should diversify your roster by having some more E1s in order to... So that way you have a diverse roster. That way you can use strats over stats. In order to use strats over stats. But he just told you to level up a few guys to E1. So he just told you to level up their stats without mentioning their strats. Furthermore, he also says, once again, I'm trying to go in as blind as possible to contingency contract. I'm not trying to go into too many spoilies on what the uh, levels actually are. Cause dog, if you do that, if you look ahead, you see the strats, if you already know how to beat a level by looking up a strat, dog, you gotta admit to yourself, that's not you beating it, okay? So if you look ahead and use strategies, according to Tectone, that's not you beating it. That might be a joke, that might be sarcasm. Take it as you will. But if you're gonna say use strats over stats, you better know some strats. And that's what I'm gonna give you in the upcoming strategy video. I know what he's probably trying to say here is diversify your roster so you can come up with strategy, so you can open up more strategies that you can use. However, high risk CC only has so many strategies. Yes, new strategies are coming out every single day, but if you are a free to play player or a low budget player that does not have a lot of resources to spend on a lot of operators, let me ask you this. Are you better off E1ing a few operators that you don't know whether you will use or not than trying to clear 18 risk without knowing what to do? Or are you better off looking ahead, seeing what the maps are, seeing what strategies exist to fit into your team, then carefully considering what operators you are going to bring to E2 or M3 in order to guarantee a risk 18 clear and get all of the rewards and not just some of it. Because as a free to play player, getting all of the rewards is quite important. We don't get that much stuff on a regular basis. Furthermore, free to play players like myself do not have the luxury to experiment with a team of new operators. If I have 180k LMD, I can E2 a single 6 star, or I can E1 184 stars. I am much better off E2ing Silver Ash to get his true Silver Slash than I am E1ing a whole bunch of 4 stars. Yes, that means that when guards and defenders are disabled and you can't use your E2 Silver Ash, you have to rely on other things. But if the only E2 that you have is Silver Ash. You're not high enough level to do contingency contract at a high risk anyway. But, but, the only reason, the only E2 you would have is Silver Ash and nothing else is if you were a new player. If you are a free to play player or a low budget player such as myself and you started on day one, by now you should have at least 10 E2s, assuming you were farming every single day. Therefore, Tectone's advice to diversify your roster so you can have a few E1s to fill out a bunch of roles that you may need. This advice is not good advice for free to play slash low budget players. It is good advice for new players, players who don't have a bunch of strong characters to use. If you already have an E2 Exu, an E2 Silver Ash, an E2 Saria, an E2 Angelina, E2 Spectre, E2 Laplan, Astacia, you're better off M3ing some of them so that you can guarantee you shut down one of the four main threats on the CC map. Furthermore, if you have an Exu and you have a Silver Ash and guards are banned, hey, you have an Exu for that drone stage. You're not gonna be completely fucked. Or let's say snipers are banned on the drone stage, or you, you, you can't use your Exu anymore, well you can use your Silver Ash now. 
If you've already pre-built those units, which free-to-play players or low-budget players should have by now, there's no reason for you to go diversify your E1 team. You already have a relatively diverse and strong team. What you should be doing instead is not leveling up a single person. Here's why. Because remember, strats over stats. If you don't know a single strategy and you are a free to play or low budget player and you start investing in someone, you may not ever use that person in contingency contract and those resources could have been better spent on E2M3ing a unit that will single-handedly win you with at least three more risk in contingency contract. That may lead to an 18 risk clear. That may lead to you getting every single reward. And right now I am currently working on this contingency contract guide that is already on Facebook, but I'll be turning it into video form so I can more detailedly explain all the little things as well as show you video example of what's happening. If you are a free to play player interested in clearing high risk CC to get all the rewards, then subscribe to this channel right now because I will be making videos detailing multiple strategies to deal with the four main threats. You can also join our Discord server linked in the description below if you want a customized strategy for your team to beat 18 risk CC. I'll see you there. Cheers.